Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here, and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we're going to be using some new products from their October 2017 release. The focal point of the card is going to be the Fa La Lama set, but then I'm also using the mountains from another new set, which is called Get Yeti, and is totally adorable. So these little mountains are included in this set. Um, I thought that they would be cute to kind of build a little scene. I am stamping on um, Nina 80 pound a solar white cardstock that I have cut out with just a stitched rectangle die. If you watched any videos on my own channel recently, that mask looks familiar. Um, I'm cheap, I don't throw anything out, and um, the Eclipse masking paper lasts for like ever. So there's really no reason to create a new hill mask when I have this one laying on my desk um, because I may or may not be a hoarder of craft things. Um, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna admit to anything. We're just gonna move on. So I'm basically, I wanted to create a sky, so that's why I'm masking those mountains and then masking the hill there. So I put down a, kind of like a light layer of salty ocean distress ink and then uh, more toward the bottom edge I used faded jeans. I'm going to use the same mask. Now you can see it was kind of like rolling up on the edge, but don't worry that's not going to deter me any to making a new mask. I'm just going to tear off the old edge and then just use this as a new hill. See? Look at how resourceful we are. So basically when you're creating hills, and I really like to do them with Distress Ink or Distress Oxide. Both both of them will work, or any um, ink that you can blend. You're creating the shadow because it is white. All you're doing is putting in the shadows, and that's going to create the top of the hill that's in front of it. So here you can see um, I have the kind of three hills going on at this point. Um, one in the back that's right in front of the mountain, and then two in the front. I'm going to put a little third um, just so there isn't a lot of white space down at the bottom. And then uh, I'm going to start right into the Copa coloring. So I wanted my little mountains to have some color. And the idea that I kind of had was, um, so I would add shading kind of from the top down, and then it would just look like the snow came right up to the mountains. And I wanted them to have a little bit of a, a purple-blue feel so that they wouldn't be, um, there's a lot of white with the snow, you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't want them to not have any color. So I am doing the shading um, as if like the snow that was sitting down on the mountains as if they were close to you and you would be able to see that shading. But then after I did it, I really did not like how the bottom edge looked um, with the flicking. So now I'm going to go in with a colorless blender and just clean up those edges. Thankfully, we're using super light color, so it cleaned it up no problem. And then I am going to um, try to fix that kind of hill area there because I had part of that mask that was kind of peeling up, and that was my fault because I should have torn it off earlier, um, I just had kind of a little wonky edge at the top. Um, I ended up just doing that um, black outline with a Copic Safe marker, and now I'm going to go back in and fix the skyline. And so I know what you're thinking. Right now you're thinking like, um, Kelly, that doesn't look any better. That kind of looks worse. And um, right now you would be right, but don't worry. Hang tight. It's going to all work out. So I brought in the B90s that seem to be the best match, uh, but you can just look on your Copic chart and see whatever color sky you're doing. If it's a sunset, sunrise, night sky, whatever you got going on in your card. Um, if your masks don't sit uh, 100%, mine never do, um, just match it to your Copic chart, whatever is closest to it, and, and use that. So for me, it was this B90 family. I'm going to add just a little bit of shading to the snow um, because even white objects aren't white. So I used a C3 and a C1 and then um, I'm just going to fill in that bottom edge where I had some lines from the flicking. I did add a little bit of the lightest BB color to the snow so they wouldn't be like stark white. I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more shading to that mountain that's set behind um, with the, I think it was a B BB02 maybe, is that what I used? Um, and then I just caught, when I was taking the um, marker up there to do the blending, the um, blue one, I just like nicked the top of that hill. And again, thankfully it's a light color, it was no problem. And then I just blended the snow part with the colorless blender, which is a great trick if you don't have a ton of um, markers and maybe you don't have the lightest shade you would like, just um, try bringing in the colorless blender. It'll pick up some of that pigment and give you a lighter tone. So there are dyes that are available for this Fala Lama set, and I'm going to be using them today. 
Um, so I wanted to make sure I stamped everything far enough apart that those dies weren't going to um, give any of the other ones trouble. And then we're going to start uh, coloring the llama. I picked the 40 family. It is a cooler brown, um, but I just thought that it kind of went with the feel of the snow, the blues are cooler colors, um, and then it would really make the red um, accessories kind of pop. So I'm just adding shading in the in the darkest parts. Um, his two back legs will be darker, um, where his big fluffy fur is covering up his face will be darker. And then you can see I'm kind of extending some of those lines that are drawn at the top um, into kind of like curls around his face. And then um, where that scarf comes down, where his saddle comes down, that would all be darker. His tail's behind us, a cute little tushy, so that would be darker. Um, so those are just kind of some areas where I am adding the shading. I start with my lightest color, work out to the darkest, from the darkest back into the lightest. That's how I feel like I get the best blend. Um, but you can do kind of whatever works for you. Um, so you can see at the top the the hair is drawn so it looks curly. On the bottom it isn't so much, but um, I wanted to give him some texture. So at, you're going to see at some point um, I'm going to add just like little half circles to his body. And <laughs> the first attempt was basically a travesty. Um, it, it, it just it was not good. You're going to see he's going to look kind of like a cheetah without the complete spots. And so to just give you... Um, just, just give you a little bit of insight into the rabbit hole that is my mind. As I was coloring this, I'm doing the little half circles, here they are, and I'm like, I made this thing look like a cheetah, like a, a llama cheetah, a llama cheetah, a chillama? This is what happens in my brain, guys. I'm not even kidding you. So then I'm like, oh my word, am I trying to combine two animals that are um, like one is one is the prey for the other? So then I have to Google, um, do cheetahs eat llamas? Which in my head, I'm like rationally, like they aren't in the same area. So I can't imagine that they eat llamas, um, but I need to know. So then I Google, do, do cheetahs eat llamas? And um, they don't, they eat uh, wildebeest and antelopes mostly, but if the cheetah was like hard up, the, the llama would be a acceptable meal for it. And then I also learned, because I got stuck in answers.com, this is me just blending, can you see how I'm just blending over it because it looks hideous? So I'm going to go back in with, um, first I tried the E42 and it wasn't dark enough, so I'm going to go back in with the E44. And when I say that I used light pressure, I'm not kidding. My mark, the tip of my marker is barely touching the page. Some of those circles, like I'm, that's what all I'm doing, is just like making little scribble circles, aren't even complete because the whole time the tip isn't even touching the page. So just keep that in mind. Back to answers.com, which totally just sucked me in um, for a long time. But nonetheless, I learned that um, cheetahs can get up to 65 miles per hour uh, it within a matter of seconds. But if they don't catch their prey within those couple of seconds, they will, um, they'll overheat and actually just give up. So if you're an antelope and you're like the, um, the Flojo or the Usain Bolt of antelopes, like you're set, you're good. Just, just run them, just keep running them down and the cheetah will just give up. So there's your little, there's your fact for the day, guys, right there. If you are the track star of your antelope group, I don't even know what an antelope group is called. See, and now I'm going to have to Google that because I don't know what a group of antelope is called. Oh, anyway, back to the coloring. So um, I picked Renz for his scarf. And this is this is the Alice in Wonderland stuff that goes on in my head, guys. You're welcome. Um so for the scarf, there's a lot of little lines, which is totally cute that his scarf is just enormous. Um, and I wanted to add shading to each one of those little lines. However, you're going to kind of have to pick and choose what you want to be underneath and what you want to be on top. So where you're going to add those lines of shading. There were two areas to me that appeared to kind of like pop out um, to be on top. And so then I put the ones that are underneath that below them, and that'll just help give you some extra dimension. I'm also adding shading on either side of the scarf because it is a round object. His neck is not flat. Um, 
though maybe that would make him more aerodynamic so he could run away from the cheetahs. But because we want it to look round, we're going to add shading on either side of it. And then also with the saddle, there'll be more shading more toward the bottom. And with the darkest color, I'm really just adding a very teeny tiny little bit because remember, we're going to cut this out with the dyes and that's terrifying for me because I'm a sloppy colorist. For the present, I knew it was going to be darker. I knew that, that it just was because of this bow that's sitting um, is a very large bow, a very pretty bow, but a very large bow. And so it's sitting on top of the majority of um, the present. So I knew that that red was just going to be darker. And sometimes you just have to accept that, that that is what that is. That because of the natural way things, shadows fall, that some of your items may be um, just a little bit darker. So I'm just for the present, basically, I'm just doing cast shadows. So what that means is anytime something is laying on top of something else, so you have one object, ribbon, laying on top of another object, present, it's going to cast a shadow. So all I'm really doing is just kind of like outlining that area where the ribbon is, because I don't have a lot of real estate to work here. Um, the, I probably didn't even need to do four colors, but, you know, I just, you've heard me say it before, I get in the zone and that's just what I do. I'm going to hit everything up with the lightest color just to keep those highlights. And then I'm going to move on to the greens because um, obviously Christmas season is going to be upon us shortly, which is baffling to me because I literally went to work today at a sleeveless shirt because it's 80 degrees in Ohio right now. I don't even know how that's happening, but I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm just going to be grateful that it's still warm while it's warm because then it's going to be snowy and I'll be hating it. Um, well, I'll be, I'll be loving it until Christmas comes and goes. And then when January and February come, I'll be like, why is it still snowing? Um, and it's because I live in Ohio. That's why it's still snowing. Anywho, um, so when I do Christmas cards, I like to use the YG90 family. It's just, um, it's a really pretty green combination and it's a little bit more desaturated. Um, and it, I felt like it matched really nicely with that E40 family. We colored our, wait, what did we call it? Chalama? Lamachita? Lama I'm just saying two words together there. I'm not even combining them. Disregard. Chalama is what we're going with because it's easier for me to remember. Um, so I felt like that matched that, that um, E40 family really nicely. And again, I'm just adding um, shading to where like there would be cast shadows, except for with the ribbon, I did add it a little bit on the ends because I literally cannot not add detail to anything. This is, it's cute, perfectly fine. It's by, like by itself, it's cute, just colored. Um, but I always got to go in there and be adding stuff. So... I did some polka dots on his saddle, match that to the ribbon, because I am matchy-matchy even in real life. Um, literally this morning I was getting ready for work and I'm standing there talking to my husband, taking my nail polish off because the nail polish I was wearing didn't match the outfit I was wearing. I have serious problems. Um, and then I added just a little diagonal stripe to the scarf. One thing to note with that, um, you want to make sure that those little stripes don't necessarily match up because if you had a diagonal striped scarf wrapped around your neck 600 times, like the Chalama here, um, it wouldn't match up. So I outlined all my images because that's how I roll with the, with the bold outline, put my dies in, ran that through my big shot, and then kind of popped them all out. Now this scarf is actually creates like a little tabby. I don't, didn't want the tabby because I'm going to pop this up over my image. So I just cut the tab part. Um, no big deal. It's going to be hidden. So you, it won't even matter. Um, sketch foam tape put that all over everything just all over it just to make sure it'd be sticky and um it would be stable and then adhered those down to that die cut panel that i have there i wanted to i tried it on just a white card base and um i just felt like it looked a little me so in order to kind of jazz things up a little bit i pulled out the faded jeans distress oxide um, which is one of actually the benefits of Distress Oxide is that they actually stamp decent versus Distressed Inks, which were very splotchy. Um, but the, the Fa La Lama set has this little image in it of um, just like some snow or stars or whatever. And so I'm doing some second generation and even third generation stamping. So I concentrated the most color at the top and then I'm moving it um, kind of down intermittently I put the piece back on top there um, just so I could see what still needed to be filled in. 
Uh, I would recommend doing that because this is ultimately how your card is going to look. Once I was happy with the background, I put the sentiment together. Now the sentiment originally says fa la 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 lama, but I only had room for a fa la la lama. Wait, I said it three times. I only had room for two laws, people. That's what I'm trying to say. So I just masked off the last one with a piece of tape. And then I stamped that down in some Simon's to Stamp Black ink, which is a great ink for sentiments. It's nice and crisp. Um, and then I'm going to pop this up. So doubly popped up card here. Aren't you proud of me with when I normally do the one layers? And here I got two layers, three, three layers, three layers of things. Nah, I'm awesome. Um, so I'm just using some white fun foam to pop that up over that background. And then uh, once I was happy with the placement, I'm going to move on to... I'm just kind of adding a little bit of something to the background. So I picked the Morning Dew Nouveau Drops, which are clear. They dry um, just clear and shiny. It's almost kind of like a glossy accents. And then I added that to um, just like a dot of it to some of the snowflakes in the background. I wanted it to look like it was actually snowing. So I'm going in with my white gel pen and just doing dots all over everything. And if you do this technique, you want to go right over your images in the front because if it was snowing, there would be snow on top of them going to add some clear sequins from the uh, Neat and Tangled Clear Sequin um, Party Mix. And then before Wink of Stella, we had this thing called um, Stickles. I don't know how long you've been in the crafting industry, but I've been here a minute. And I loved Stickles, particularly Stardust Stickles, because that matched everything. And it took on the color of whatever you put it on top of. So I just, I bought, I could have bought stock in Stardust Stickles. And I still use it because it's glitter. And if you need me to explain to you why we put glitter on there, we can't be friends. But I dotted that all over just everything. And then that's the whole card. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching on the Neat and Tangled YouTube channel, uh, please follow the link below as we are doing giveaways over on the blog. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Catch you on the next video. Bye.